it's time to treat ourselves to what we came here for. And that is to set aside the space for us to get to breathe and be nurtured and let go of what we came here to let go of and let in what we came here to let in. Breathwork is dedicated to coming to that experience of connectedness with source. Once I live in that experience of connectedness with source, then the booby prize or the second place no longer has that oomph to it. What's the booby prize? Well, being right, having more money than the next person, being popular, you know, all those things that the culture promotes. It was like in the Garden of Eden, what supposedly sold Adam and Eve on eating the apple, swallowing the idea that they weren't good enough, they would really be good enough if they did this. If you brush with gleep, then you'll have sex appeal. <laughs> if you drive a Sudsmobile, they'll want to go out with you. If you, you know, all of the major premise, see the snake is the only creature that can't go backwards. And once you set it in motion, it's got to go forwards. And it's like logic. That's what the tree of good and evil is about, logic. Once you set in logic, a premise and a, major premise, a minus premise, then you, the conclusion has got to come. So you want to be popular. If you read my book, you'll become popular. So what's the conclusion? Buy your book. Hey, here we go. Sold. So once you're sold with the idea that you're not God, then you got to do everything possible to start being more godlike, go to church, say your prayer, fast, whatever it is that you are told is going to make you more godlike. But you can never do enough to earn what you already have. But you can keep trying. You can keep trying. And so once we buy that premise that we are not okay, that we are not divine, that we are not already saved, then we've got to do whatever we can to get there, earn a degree, get approval, make money. No, there's nothing wrong with any of those things. They can be worthwhile life goals. But if they're doing it out of the sense of I'm not good enough, then all of a sudden, they've got an urgency to them. And you know what? They always fall flat. Oh, I wrote the book. Oh, I got the degree. Oh, I made the money. Oh, I achieved the uh, top of the billboard ratings or whatever. And, eh, you know, I, I had the buzz for a while. Met me postpartum sets in. And so, what is it that doesn't lose its flavor after chewing a while? What is it that is fulfilling to the soul? And that is coming back to living in that experience. The, and again, I said, it's an experience we've all had. It's not something I'm selling, you know, oh, I've got the experience for you. I don't have it for you. I've got it for me. I'm going to tell you the secret <laughs> right now. <laughs> Listen up. So the thing that most directly takes you into source identity is experiencing the joy of being you. Oh, what? Is that it, Jim? That's it? Yes, that's it. 
experiencing the joy of being you, sitting here right now, listening to this guy yammer on. Can you, are you willing to experience the joy of you? Oh no, this pillow's a little lumpy. Oh, I didn't like that cookie I had for dinner. Oh, I did, you know, that is, the, the mind will always go to something else that's not quite right. Because the mind doesn't have the whole freaking story. The mind is only half. It's a great day. Well, it could be a little cooler outside. Uh, well, we're having a great time here. Well, yeah, it's all right. But, you know, I was expecting something a little different. Uh, do to do to do. Whatever you say, the mind has a counter to it. Living in the mind ain't going to do it. Experiencing the joy of who you are. Are we taught that in catechism? Do we hear those commercials on the TV? No, we hear, if you want to be fulfilled, get a condo, timeshare, that'll do it. And, and it's always that next thing. It's always that, you know, I said you're not going to be any more divine at the end of this week than you are right at this moment. But hopefully, we'll be willing to experience it more fully, to own it. This is our chance. This is our chance right now. And, and I'm, you know, I can say the breathwork session is all about that. But why wait till then? <laughs> you can do it right now. What would you do? You know, I never know what's going to come out my mouth. And this morning, when we did that little meditation thing, that's the first time I ever heard that. It sounded to me like an exercise I do all the time. What can you do right now to enjoy your breath a little bit more? That's why I came here, because uh, it surprises. I don't know what's going to happen. Did some people find that they could do something to enjoy their breath a little bit more? Well, tell me about it after class, because I <laughs> no, no, that's great. That's great. Or Andy, Andy, yeah. He had a great suggestion. He thought of something that was pleasurable, like a wave-like experience. And yeah, so we have the potential, we have the tools within us to enjoy being us right at this moment. And I, I guess I've been saying this for years. Uh, the same energy that goes into fear, sadness, anger, is the energy that goes into joy. But it's got a different twist to it. Fear is life energy with the thought, oh, I'm going to be hurt. Something is going to cause me pain, make me feel bad, exclude me. Anger is life energy. Is, I'm not getting what I want. Sadness is life energy. I've lost something. Something's missing. Now, None of those things are bad. They're just telling me that I'm harboring something at the moment that is saying I'm not okay. And it prompts me then to do something about it. And whenever I'm in a not okay position, the mind says, you got two choices. Now, change your mind or change the scene. So start saying something that will help me enjoy being here right now, or go someplace else. <laughs> so those are, are the resources of, of the mind. Change your mind or change the scene. The resources of the spirit, that's it. That's wonderful. This is what you did. You took a breath. is to take a breath and be willing to experience 
the joy of being me right now. So I was in bed this morning, uh, waking up early as I usually do before these intensives, but there's so much energy. Anyone find themselves not sleeping as much as you? Yeah, right, right, right. There's so much available energy here. It's like, it came to me this morning as I was laying in bed, I experience this energy every year before the intensive. And my mind is saying, oh, am I gonna remember what's on my piece of paper? Am I going to offend anyone? Am I going to have a great training? So the mind is busy throwing in all its commercials. But this morning, something was different. I was just experiencing being connected with you. And I was experiencing the joy of being me, laying in bed. And it's like, I've been saying it for years. And the, <laughs> so that, keep telling the truth, you know, and the, it'll come to you. And it's like, what, wait a minute, this is the same energy that I've experienced every year before, but I would call it maybe anxiety, maybe some fear, skittishness, whatever. And then it would all kind of go away when we got together because then we're just totally overwhelmed with the community, with the love. But we're not always with community. We're not always with like-spirited brothers and sisters. How can I enjoy being me no matter where I am? Even a lumpy pillow. Because uh, the joy, see, joy is different than happiness. Happiness is, oh, something's titillating my sense buds. And if something is mm, uh, delicious, it gets the dopamine going. Whereas fulfillment is a different kind of thing that gets the uh, serotonin going. And it may not always be completely pleasurable. Ah, but it's fulfilling something else. And my nervous system is telling me about it. So on the pyramid of happiness, there's pleasures at the base level. And then there is satisfaction, which is, oh, I've got a skill. I'm a breath worker. I share it with someone else. They appreciate it. And they uh, pay me for my services. Satisfaction. That's another, would you say, a more enduring, a little higher form. Pleasure comes and goes. You know, I like grapes. I love grapes. Eat so many grapes. I don't like grapes anymore. <laughs> you know, it's a fleeting form of happiness, you know. But the, pure, but the top of the pyramid of happiness is purpose. It's that sense of I am fulfilling my soul's contract and being here on the planet right now. No, it's not about fulfilling a goal. It's like, okay, I went to the breathwork session because I want to become a breath worker because I had the experience that it's really healing for me. And I want to be able to share that out of my own love. And I want to lead my life sharing breath work with uh, having breath work as a tool to share with others very noble goal very wonderful thing but i'm not there yet i don't have the degree we're not at the end of the week i don't have the certification to go out and practice so well, well, let's make through the whole thing <laughs> another excuse another carrot at the end of the stick now this is about to practice being in joy right now. And it's not always pleasurable. Joy is not pleasure. They're not the same thing. Pleasure is fleeting. So even though maybe your underwear is too tight or, or you know, whatever it doesn't feel pleasurable, or you can still be in the joy of being you in your life right now, doing what is the next step to living your purpose. Because that's what we all came here for.
What is the next step in living my purpose? And, and I'm not going to not be joyful until I take the next step. No, I'm, I'm in joy because I have committed to take that next step. I'm not gonna be joyful after, I do, after we do the breath work session tonight. No, I'm joyful right now because I've set it up to be with a partner that's gonna give me love and attention for 40 minutes, maybe. <laughs> maybe more. And, and I'm gonna breathe and I'm going to get whatever the spirit of breath gives to me. I'm in joy right now. Just knowing that I have taken this next step to living my purpose. So let's review. What's the quickest route to unity consciousness, to identifying with source, not identifying with the half-baked vision of me that my mind told me I was? or that my parents told me I was, or that my boss told me I was, or that the culture told, or the teacher told me. It's something you don't, <laughs> right? And you know what? It doesn't take any education. Children do this. Well, what am I paying all this money for? I just go, <laughs> I just go to the playground and let's get on the let's get on the swings. Hey, it can do it. This the simplicity, it doesn't take, it's not complex. This is not a difficult concept. <laughs> I'm not saying it's easy to do that because of this isn't a, a learning experience, this is an unlearning experience. I'm not going to tell you anything new. I'm going to tell myself and you, let's peel away those layers of what we've been taught about ourselves. And that's what the breathwork session that we're going to do tonight is about. You're not going to put earbuds in and listen to Jim's YouTube videos. No, you are going to connect with the spirit of breath. You're going directly to source. Breath is the rainbow bridge to source. It brings aliveness to our body, brings peace to our heart, clarity to our mind, and puts our, the hands of spirit on the driving wheel of our life. <laughs> so, all right. So here's the setup. And I was reminded this afternoon, gracefully, by people in the group that was out there is like, yeah, yeah, we got all this stuff, but some of us haven't even done this before. So what are we doing? <laughs> you know, this, you, you've done a great sales job so far, Jim, you know, we're ready for it, but what is it? What are we doing? Let's review. <laughs> so we're going to, in a few minutes, we're going to choose a partner. And that partner will be with us for the period of up to two hours or so that we do an exchange. And half that time is going to be with us breathing and the other half is our partner breathing. And we're going to set it up so that people with less experience with it will get to breathe first because otherwise they'll feel self-conscious. Am I doing this right? Uh, am I really helping this person? We'll tell you how to do that. But first of all, the person who is breathing will, you're gonna carve out your little place for you and your partner to be. And one person's gonna lay down. We got, you're gonna lay on the floor with uh, pillows, blankies, a mat if you want it, and you're carving out your little nest there together. One person is going to be laying down, and the other person is going to be sitting next to him. The person laying down will be the breather. The person sitting next to him is the sitter in a 
holotropic breath work, they don't call them facilitators or breath workers, they call them sitters because they want them to get the idea. Your idea is to sit there. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. You're just a loving presence. You're not a doer. You're not a, a, a maker or a shaker. You're a sitter. So you sit there and you gives, create safe space for that person. The breather is starting to connect their breath. This is called connected breathing. So that means you connect an inhale to an exhale, to an inhale, to an exhale, to an inhale, to an exhale. And generally we start out breathing through the mouth, but for some, as I said, you gotta calibrate this to your own body. And there's some people who have a very uh, sensitive nervous system that that may be too much too fast. And so you breathe through your nose, but you'll get support from your coach there with you. But anyhow, one thing that we're all doing is connecting the rhythm, the inhale to the exhale, the inhale to the exhale, and we're relaxing on the exhale. Ding, important point because we're going to be breathing a little faster than normal. We're not going to be breathing like a banshee. You know, <laughs> no, you will turn into a pretzel quickly. <laughs> You'll hyperventilate. Okay. You, you won't get hurt. I mean, you're, no one I know of has died from breathing. I have known of quite a few people who have died from not breathing. <laughs> But no one I know has died from breathing. So we're going to be breathing a little faster than normal, possibly like this. I, I, I'm always cautious by demonstrating because then it's, oh, that's the way to do it. Do it the way just, uh, but all I'm doing is demonstrating a little bit of what it could look like. So I'm breathing a little faster than a normal, uh, a person normally would just sitting in a chair talking, right? So I'm breathing a little bit faster, but you notice I'm relaxing on the exhale. I'm not pushing on the exhale. <sighs> mm, no. Relax on the exhale, breathe a little fast. And what you're doing then is you're calibrating your body to tolerate more oxygenation more life energy. This is not just oxygen, you're breathing life energy, prana, if you will. And you're creating it safe for your body to take in a little more, to let it through. Every time you inhale, you're taking in 1 million particles of the world around you. And every time you exhale, you're exhaling 1 million particles. And uh, literally, and some of the particles you exhale tonight will be in China at the end of the week. We are literally putting our energy throughout the world. And it's passing through your system. So your loving intention is putting a charge on those molecules that you're putting out into the world. There's a joyful thought. So you're going to be doing a connected rhythm. That's instruction number one, connected breathing rhythm. Instruction number two is that you're gonna continue that connected breathing rhythm, adjusting it to what allows your breath to be ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, easy and pleasurable. That's what we're looking for. Now, it may not always be easy and pleasurable because you may be, because sometimes the goal of breath work is to experience the joy of doing nothing other earthly value than breathing. You're not feeding people in China. You're not uh, developing a new vaccine. You know, you're, you're just laying there breathing. <laughs> okay. And experiencing the joy of being alive, breathing. Now, if anything gets in the way 
of that, it'll, it'll appear. We're not looking for the boogeyman. We're not looking for trauma. We're looking for just breathing fully and freely. That's it. And anything in our system, physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, that is having a problem with that, it will, it'll stand out, kind of like a sore thumb. If your body were a garden hose, we're just going to turn the spigot up a little bit. Now we're going to do other techniques this week where we turn the spigot down and you breathe a little less, a little slower. But tonight we're going to experiment with breathing a little faster, a little more full. Uh, this is a specific technique to innervate the sympathetic nervous system to clear out the right brain where holding patterns are stored but also where joy and pleasure is stored, okay? Slower than normal breathing will innervate the parasympathetic nervous system, which will give that oceanic feeling of bliss. And you know, that's what we do normally during the day. Breathing through the mouth faster than normal is not what I recommend you do walking down the street. You know, it's not, it's a specific thing that we're doing for a specific purpose here tonight. We're turning up the spigot, flushing out the system. If there's tar and rocks in that hose, it's like a Walt Disney cartoon, you know, pressure builds up until you let go, whoosh. Oh, this feels nice. <laughs> I didn't know I could feel this free just from breathing. For some people, it's very dramatic like that. For some people, no, it's slow. It's just incremental, makes no difference. As I said uh, in the room there earlier today, there are no bad breathing sessions. You cannot fail at this, <laughs> okay? The only thing there are are lousy conclusions that people reach about. Oh, this didn't meet my expectations. I didn't have the zappy wowy experience that Fred did over there, or you know, that I thought I was going to, or the person that sold me into coming here uh, told me about, or whatever. <laughs> so what the breath is going to tell you is where you are right now and what you're ready for right now. Period. If you accept that, if you're good with that, tomorrow you'll take another step. And the next day, another step. And the next day, we're actually in one big long breathwork session from now until Friday, <laughs> okay? So uh, you may take, we're all gonna take the first step tonight. There may be pleasure in it, there may not be pleasure in it, but there can be joy in it. There can be joy, I did it. I came here and I went through the fear of what it would be to breathe in a crowd of people that I don't know, to open up my cellar door and look what's in the shadows, to open up windows of the ceiling and experience all of the guides that are with me and are crowded in this room right now that are cheering for us all. I'm just opening my awareness. That's what miracles are about. They're not something extraordinary. They're just that I've gone to another level of consciousness to see what's normal for a divine being to be and to experience. So we're gonna create a new normal <laughs> and just in doing this. So, and so what it, whatever it is that comes, I trust, that's my process. That's what I came here for. This is the first step. This is time for me. So you're gonna get a partner, you're gonna set up your nest, you're gonna decide who goes first. And then the person who is breathing, actually, we're gonna have a warm up exercise before that, yeah. That's what, tonight we're gonna to have a warm-up exercise before that. 
we're going to do a two person exercise that will help with the first part, which is coming to an attention. What you want for yourself. We call it the, an AB exercise. And I'll tell you how to do that in a few minutes. But first, you're going to get that breathing rhythm going. That's the beginning of the session. Takes a little while to get used to laying on the ground with someone staring at you. <laughs> you know, it's like your mind is like, uh, this is weird. Uh, but you'll get over that or not. Uh, <laughs> And then, and then you just get into breathing. That's what's interesting. That's what I came here for. Let's experience what's going on inside of me. Let's, you know, open the floor and the ceiling. Let's expand our consciousness. So we, we ride the breath, ride that breath down the river and keep steering yourself towards what makes it more easy and pleasurable. Keep the breath riding and keep steering. That's the middle part of the session. That's when things happen. Could be all physical, could be emotional, could be all of the above, whatever it is. We just take what comes. That's the yin and the yang of breath work. The yang is, I have an intention. I would like to feel a greater sense of peace in my relationship with my partner. Might be what comes to you. Uh, I don't mean your breathwork partner. I mean, you know, your living partner. Um, uh, or I would like to uh, work with the healing of my knee that I twisted while I was running back to the session. You know, or I would like to experience a greater sense of purpose in my life. I've been feeling kind of... Uh, drifting afloat, whatever it is, you tell that pur purpose to your partner. So they're on board. They're supporting you with that purpose. Okay. That's the yang part of it. That's the do. That's what I want. The yin part of it then is I breathe and I take what comes. And I trust. I trust my process. Because it may not seem like it has anything to do with what my stated intention was. Let it go, let it go and just try, don't try to force, no, uh, knee, knee, breathing in the knee, healing knee, no, no. <laughs> let it go and trust the flow. Let it go and trust the flow. And then after a while, there's generally kind of a buildup of energy and, and then a quieting down. And the nifty thing about doing this in a community is you'll feel that in the whole group. You know, you have the sense that there's a, a rhythm that we create together in doing this. It's, it's nifty. Now, even the people who are doing this in their rooms uh, in Pango Pango or Kuwait or Australia, are connected with us. So you guys are breathing with us. You have signed on to this community. We're breathing for you and you're breathing for us, all right? So we are all part of this session tonight. We're all part and we're doing our part by what? Breathing, breathing. breathing. yeah, that's right, that's right. Breathing, not just breathing, breathing with a loving intention. Breathing with a loving intention. So that what I told my partner that I wanted in the session was more peace with my partner. That was a loving intention. Or I wanted to heal my knee. That was a loving intention. Or I want to feel more peace in the world. That's a loving intention. Breathwork is breathing with a loving intention. Conscious connected breath work is connecting the inhale to the exhale a little faster than normal, and then adjusting yourself towards what allows you to ride that wave and go with the flow. Then there's a letting go, a coming down to normal breathing, a little time for integration within yourself, just letting it be. Don't let your mind jump in and judge it. Oh, that was a good one. Or, oh boy, that. 
I would have had a good session, but Schmo over there was moaning and crying, and that just like, <laughs> turned me off. <laughs> Don't let your mind make excuses and, and do all that. Don't let your mind take away your joy. So if someone over there is crying and uh, yay, those are my tears. They're crying for all of us. Someone over there is angry. yoo Go for it. They're letting out our frustration. They're opening up those channels to have that energy free now to get what we really want. Someone over there is scared. That's my fear. I'm breathing with that fear. And I'm breathing with them. It's not like, oh, get them away from me. I don't want to. Bad juju. <laughs> we, we're here as one body. That's the truth. You know, we're taught, oh, no, this is just my body. And no, no, no. We are connected. We are the body of spirit. So this is our chance to everything you do that helps you being in joy in your body is helping me. Everything that I do is helping you. That's, again, why we come here and do this together.